My name is Peter and my partner for this project is Lori Brown. Our video topic is on folklore associated with St. Gobnet and bees. St. Gobnet is the patron saint of beekeepers as well as the patron saint of iron workers. In a quote from the academic essay, The Bee, Its Keeper and Produce in Irish and Other Folk Traditions, the author emphasizes that St. Gobnate seems to be best known for her courage in protecting her people by miraculous aid. As with many Irish saints, St. Gobnate reveals her wonderful influence over animals and nature itself. The origin of St. Gobnate remains unclear. There are two separate stories telling us where she came from. The first story suggests that she was born in County Clare, but soon left her family because of some sort of feud. After leaving, an angel told her to look for a place of resurrection and that this place would be marked by nine gleaming white deer. She traveled around Ireland to find this place, and while doing so, established churches and holy wells dedicated to herself. Eventually, she found a resurrection place in Ballyvorney. The second legend has it that St. Gobnate originated in Kerry. She was the daughter of a pirate. According to accounts, she went ashore in Kerry, and an angel appeared telling her to go and find her site of resurrection. At this site, there would be nine white deer grazing. She happened upon the site in Ballyvorney. These stories end similarly, but the important difference is that of origin. There are many folklore stories associated with St. Gobnate and her superhero bees. According to these accounts, she used her bees as weapons and protection from robbers who would try to steal her cattle or invaders of other kinds. One version of the tale, given by the Irish examiner, states that her beehive turned into a bronze helmet and the bees themselves turned into soldiers, who then drove out the thieves. This story was actually Harry Clark's inspiration for the stained glass window of St. Gobnate that can be seen in the Honan Chapel on the University College Cork campus. She is adorned in blue robes with bees surrounding her, and two men can be seen at her feet with fearful expressions. Bees as weapons and defense systems was not the only benefit. St. Gobnate also believed that when a person died, the soul left in a form of a bee or butterfly. The bee existed as a metaphor for death, and it also existed as one for the cure to health. A quote from the Irish Examiner says, Lots of miracle embellished stories survive where St. Gobna and her superhero bees save the day. One story tells of how she cured one of her sick nuns using her own honey. It's fascinating to see how St. Gobna used her honeybees for different reasons, and if we consider the general idea that bees are associated with good omens, then it's clear that every time St. Gobnet called upon them, it was for good reason. Pilgrimage takes place at St. Gobnet's Church and Shrine in Ballyvorney. It attracts pilgrims daily, however, a peak day of pilgrimage is on the 11th of February, also known as Feast Day. After attending a rosary, pilgrims remain to make rounds at different prayer stations. Details of these rounds are provided in the book, St. Gobnet of Ballyvorney, by Bernie Donahue Murphy. I will be quoting some passages from his book. Pilgrimage begins in front of the statue of Gobnate. Pilgrims recite seven Our Fathers, seven Hail Marys, and seven Gloria, and then walk clockwise around the outer path while reciting the Apostles' Creed. Station two is at St. Gobnate's house, where the same prayers are recited while walking again in a clockwise circle. After finishing at station two, the pilgrims go to a holy well nearby. They will then kneel down and drink water from the holy well. Once finished here, the pilgrims will cross the road into the old graveyard, where the remaining stations can be found. To complete the pilgrimage at Station 10, the pilgrim will again recite seven Our Fathers, seven Hail Marys, and seven Gloria, as well as one decade of the Rosary, and drink from the water of the well. There is little to no evidence to suggest when pilgrims started worshipping St. Gobnet, but it likely occurred long before the 17th century. The belief is that since it was already popular in the 17th century, that it had to have been popular and had been happening for many years prior. However, if we consider the power of the Pope and the power he held at the time, we can deduce that the major cult and worship of St. Gobnet began when Pope Clement VIII declared a special indulgence for people who visited the parish, went to confession and communion, and prayed for peace among Christian princes. The Pope declared that if you did this on her feast day, February 11th, you would be granted 10 years of special indulgences. In modern society today, the major places of worship for St. Gobnet are the Aran Islands, Duncayon in West Kerry, and Ballyvorney near Cork and Kerry. Here the local people celebrate her on feast day.
And this concludes our video project done on the folklore associated with St. Gumnate. Thanks for watching.